After taking some time to look at the chassis itself and the tubes, I thought I'd pull the speaker back up here. We'd take a look at it together and see what kind of shape it's in. I'm assuming it's the original uh, Zenith. The part number's not called out on the schematic, but you can see here it's a 49-191 Alpha Bravo. And it lists the uh, fill coil to be 15 ohms for the uh, 6 volt DC power supply. When you look at the schematic that I placed in the picture in picture, you'll see on this particular farm radio the 6 volts itself is applied uh, directly across the uh, fuel coil. And you see I have the meter hooked up here and I'm reading about uh, 14 ohms, so I'm good there. Now I did a, a preliminary check here and it looks like we have a problem here with the uh, output transformer. Let me uh, move the leads around here. It appears that uh, just a first glance here the output transformer here is open on the primary side. So I'll need to spend some more time on that. It may be nothing more than just a uh, cold solder joint um, here, here, or something else with the uh, lead wire from the transformer itself. I'll need to pull the speaker out just to uh, take a closer look at that. So uh, let me go ahead and get the speaker removed. Simple enough here, just two fasteners here, one uh, on the north side, one on the south side. So this thing should just lift uh, straight off now. And it's a, a heavy little thing. Make sure I don't stick my fingers here through the uh, cone itself, but the, uh, the cone and the uh, voice coil and the former here look to be in uh, fantastic shape. You go ahead and get this uh, cabinet off the bench here. To recap here, these two pins closest to the uh, center here appear to go to the uh, fuel coil itself which uh, does show a DC resistance around uh, 15 ohms. We'll check the inductance of that as well and document that. And the two outer pins here and here, uh, that's where I'm showing open. So uh, let's uh, make certain this pin, this pin, definitely these leads uh, go back to the transformer itself. Then I'll probably go ahead and just take the uh, soldering iron here and uh, heat these up and just reflow the uh, solder real quick and just see if that makes any difference. Since I know my uh, DC resistance going to the uh, fill coil is very, very close, is what's called out here on the uh, casting of the uh, speaker frame itself. Um, here's just one of the leads here, and uh, it definitely uh, ties back here to the uh, transformer, the primary side. So no need to uh, check the other. Let me go ahead and hit this uh, first pin here. All right, I'll let that cool just for a moment, then I'll move my uh, clip over here on that, and we'll uh, hit this one here. Okay, I'll let that cool just for a moment, and uh, get the meter hooked up here. We'll recheck. Again, if we're still open, I'll uh, desolder these completely, pull the leads out. We'll do a further inspection here of the uh, leads themselves down to the uh, transformer itself. Okay, let's recheck and see if our effort uh, paid off here. You can see we're uh, definitely still open. And that doesn't mean I still don't have a problem here within the uh, conductor itself back to the uh, pins. I thought I would try to reflow the solder first. Let me go ahead and get my uh, solder sucker up here, and I'm going to go ahead and just remove the solder here from these two locations, pull the uh, conductors out, and uh, we'll test going back to the uh, transformer here. Right. 
Okay, that was up in there uh, very well, and it was uh, well done. It looks like you can see the uh, length of the conductor itself, less the insulation, uh, was almost a perfect match. And I went the uh, total length here of the uh, pin itself. That's showing up here which would be uh, ideal. So I know i got some good solder to flow, so that's most likely uh, not my problem, at least on this side. Let me go ahead and uh, repeat that process for the other one here. I haven't uh, taken time really to study this schematic, but I want to make certain that uh, this conductor here gets soldered back uh, to this pin. So I'm going to just use a uh, tie wrap here. To uh, signify this location, I'll put it around the pin, I'll put it around the conductor itself, and the other, of course, needs no marking, and uh, that way I'll be certain that uh, I get this thing tied back in the way it was. This one's wanting to be just a little stubborn, so I'm going to just cut it right here, and uh, let me clean these two conductors now. And let's repeat the uh, DC resistance measurements and see what we have. As you can see, I'm just taking some fine sandpaper here and just uh, cleaning the uh, conductors well enough here that we can just recheck. Okay, cross your fingers. I'm not really hopeful that there will be any change, but you just never know. Alright, it's definitely uh, open. Let's do some further investigation down here around the uh, base of the transformer itself and see if we see anything uh, physically wrong here. I'm not sure if you guys will be able to hear this or not, but I've got my audio signal generator hooked up and I'm just generating a uh, tone around uh, 400 hertz or so. And I'll vary that just a bit. I've got a fan running in the background itself just to circulate some air. So it may not be audible. I'm just going to the uh, voice coil itself off the uh, secondary of the transformer. I just tried the uh, primary side and uh, definitely hear nothing. And uh, just triple check the uh, DC resistance here. Uh, just probing through the uh, conductors itself. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the uh, transformer here. Uh, looks like it's just uh, one fastener. Fortunately, it's not, uh, looks like a whole lot to it. Well, I say that, but uh, hopefully it won't be problematic. It does go back down to the uh, part of the frame here. So hopefully I can get that out without creating any damage and unsolder these uh, two uh, conductors here. Back on this uh, little terminal strip here that connect back to the voice coil itself. Um, I'll do this uh, offline, then come back and uh, we'll do some more probing here on the transformer. Okay, I took this over to the bench where I could get a uh, better look at it. And uh, it would have been nice if they would have just cut a slot in here and you'd just be able to loosen the fastener up uh, just a bit and slide that back on. By the way, the uh, output leads, I was going to desolder those from that little uh, terminal strip there back to the uh, voice coil where the output transformer and voice coil connections come together. I ended up clipping those off right at that point. I just wanted to make sure I didn't create um, any damage. And knowing, you can see the uh, shielding here that's across here has uh, had better days here for the uh, secondary side. But uh, let's go ahead and just check the uh, secondary side of the transformer and uh, see if it's open or not. Well, it looks like the, uh, the secondary side here is uh, definitely okay. That's what I would expect to see here. You can see it reads about uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 ohms or so. Just for giggles, let me uh, run back here to the primary side and uh, just retest it one more time. And it's still open. Let's go ahead and dissect the uh, output transformer here. And what I'm going to do 
and I'll try to position this where it shows up on uh, camera hopefully. You can see I've got just a little bit of an air gap there. I'm going to just take a sharp razor and uh, just cut across here and then try to pull back these first few layers and uh, see if we can get down in here to the uh, winding itself. I just took my uh, marker pen here and just marked the area where I want to make this uh, first cut. So let me uh, position this and hopefully we can do it on camera and I'll probably uh, speed through some of this as it'll be boring and uh, very tedious. Before I go any further I'm going to go ahead and remove the transformer itself from the uh, plate the mounting plate and uh, try to open this thing up and see if I can get the uh, center core piece out. Okay, I think I can get this uh, plate off now. And I should be able to open this transformer up. There we go. Let me throw on some gloves here. This is uh, sharp on the edges here just to make sure that uh, I don't get a nasty cut here. With the uh, casing removed, uh, this section here should be the removable section, and it is. And I should be able to uh, slide the uh, transformer out, or hopefully out. Let me uh, work this just a little bit, just to make sure I don't create any additional damage here. See if I can get it to separate here from the center core. Okay, folks, I'm still working it. Uh, what it appears, the uh, secondary winding here is on the outside, and the primary winding that I want to get to is uh, internal, nearest the, uh, the core itself. So I'm just trying to work this down uh, little by little without damaging the um, primary or secondary winding. So um, let me continue to uh, work this and uh, see if I can get this uh, to release from the uh, laminations here. Just a quick update. You can see I'm uh, still working this thing down and uh, it's on there extremely tight. So I, I may end up just damaging the windings being able to try to remove this but uh, I'll continue working at it. See I'm getting uh, just a little closer here. And I did apply just a little bit of heat with my uh, heat gun to see if I could uh, loosen up any uh, wax or epoxy or anything that may have been used there in the center core. It did seem to uh, help uh, just a little bit. I wanted to be very cautious and not apply uh, too much heat. You can see here I'm getting uh, extremely close and again, I may have damaged the uh, transformer trying to get this out. But it's already damaged, so uh, it's really no big deal. Still trying to be as cautious as possible, but I'm having to apply a lot of pressure here. This thing was wedged in there extremely tight, so... So that's where I'm at. Let me uh, continue to work it here. I've got uh, maybe another, what, half an inch or so to go. Okay, finally got this thing separated here. And uh, here's the uh, transformer windings themselves, secondary and primary. Let me see what it would take here and see if I can break the uh, secondary winding loose from the uh, primary winding if that's even possible. Alright, and just for the uh, heck of it here, let's just see if our uh, secondary winding here is still any count. And I think that's what we measured before, 0.4, 0.5 ohms. Let's go back over here to the uh, primary winding. And it still shows uh, open. Let me go ahead and just remove the uh, remaining paper here, if I can, from around the uh, secondary winding here. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get this core loose here or not from the uh, center core. Let me look at this a little closer. 
I believe my only opportunity here to get down to the uh, primary winding itself is going to be uh, just unwind the uh, secondary here. So I'll go ahead and do that and I've made note here of the uh, winding direction and orientation in relationship to the uh, lead out wires. So uh, let me go ahead and do this off camera. Last uh, winding here and I counted uh, 74 to 75. Kind of went to sleep there for a minute, woke back up as I was counting. So uh, anyway I've got the uh, length of wire and uh, we'll mic this out and see what the uh, diameter is, but uh, this wire looks to be in great shape. All right, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and uh, cut into this, in this area, uh, right in here, and see if I can lift it up. Typically, the uh, failure points, in a lot of cases, is real near the uh, solder uh, lead location, so I'm going to just cut here and see if I can pull this back. Okay, it looks like I'm uh, okay to cut through this uh, first little layer here. And if not, again, no big deal. Okay, and you can see there's the uh, connectivity, the solder joints where they were initially made there to the uh, transformer for the uh, primary side. Let me take some alcohol here and uh, clean this up. And what I'm going to try to do is leave everything in place. Just take my soldering iron and uh, just reheat these uh, where they reside and uh, just see if that makes any difference. This one looks to be soldered up well, and I can see the uh, lead there. I don't think it's broke. I'm going to throw my uh, magnifier sign and see if I can uh, just see anything near this connection point or this before I apply any uh, solder. I've got my magnifiers on, and it may not show up on this camera because I may not be able to zoom in enough, but you can see the uh, fine magnet wire here that attaches back to this lead. There's a lot of corrosion on this side, so I'm wondering if this is my problem. Again, it could be deeper into the core. This magnet wire is so, so fine, but I'm just looking to see if I can identify where the uh, wire, magnet wire itself, actually comes up here and attaches itself, but there's just a lot of uh, corrosion right in this area. I did just check the uh, DC resistance again, and that's uh, still nothing. So uh, maybe there's my lead wire right there. And I can't tell for sure. Or it may be actually right here. Let me just go ahead and heat this up real quick. A little more probing around there, and I did uh, find the other uh, connection point here. Let me see if I can get this up against the uh, blue background where it shows up here and still stays focused on camera right there. So it does not appear to be broke, but again, I'm going to go ahead and uh, both of these, uh, go ahead and apply some uh, solder right in here, and then we'll. Uh, if that doesn't make any change, then we'll go ahead and just cut back and just see if I see anything here on these first few layers. If I don't, then we'll know the issue is uh, more internal to the uh, windings itself. Okay, still nothing. What I'm going to do is just leave the meter hooked up here, and I'm going to go ahead and hit this other uh, connection point here. Okay, no change in the meter. I'm going to go back to this one one more time. And I'll just reflow the solder here as well. Okay, and still no change. And uh, you can see, again, just to uh, prove out my uh, lead wires coming in are good. Uh, still open at this point as well.
Let me go ahead and cut this other tape right here. I think you guys may be able to spot the uh, magnet wire there. Ah, I may have just broke it, but look what we've got. I was just barely uh, pulling on it. And this piece came loose from about right here, somewhere. Like looking for a needle in a haystack. Let me uh, probe around right here, see if I can find anything. Maybe we'll get lucky. Okay, you can see I'm still uh, peeling the egg here. And uh, the, here's my one original lead. And I think I've uncovered the other lead that broke right here. So uh, let me continue to uh, exercise some caution here and uh, see if I can get back to this point. That actually may be the uh, same lead here. I can't tell. Looks like I've got one routing back down this way and then this one right here. So let me just uh, double check myself. We'll do some more DC resistance measurements. See if we get lucky here. Still some work to do, but you can see I have uh, both leads exposed. And uh, I mentioned this one broke, and you can see I ended up with probably just what over a half an inch of uh, lead wire where it broke. And then uh, when I was uh, actually just moving this one, trying to uh, uncover it from the cardboard, it actually gave way as well. So I'm not sure if I had two breaks or not within uh, maybe a half an inch or less from uh, the solder tube locations. I've been doing some uh, light sanding here. I'm going to take a uh, aspirin and uh, heat it up with my soldering iron and see with a little flux here and I'm going to clean these real good with alcohol first and uh, see if I can get these uh, tinned up good. I'm going to do some more trimming right in this area and then uh, go ahead and lay a piece of tape down and uh, get ready to uh, create some new uh, lead wires here so we can get these soldered in too and uh, just check the uh, DC resistance and see if we're uh, fortunate enough here to make a repair. You can see I have my uh, new lead dressings on um, here and I've got it uh, taped up using uh, some great tape for this uh, purpose here. It's the uh, gaffer tape. And just a small strip here. And you can see I've got the uh, leads already tinned. And I've got these cleaned, tinned. And I'm going to just see if I can uh, just get those to wrap around. And I'll have to do this off camera. Uh, take these leads here. And uh, See if I can, again, just wrap those around the uh, conductor and uh, get some solder to uh, flow. With the one strip of gaffer tape down, I've uh, got that uh, leads secured to the uh, transformer windings themselves, and uh, I've got everything soldered in. And uh, it's a moment of truth. Let me go ahead and uh, strip these leads back, and let's check DC resistance followed by inductance. Just lay that over here and hopefully the meter will be in view. Fantastic news. 
So you can see I'm reading uh, what 919, 920 uh, ohms or 0.919k. I don't have any documentation on the schematic to show what it should be, but I'm going to call this uh, a working transformer now on the primary side. Now I've just got to get the uh, secondary back on, which is uh, probably a little more difficult than it may uh, seem at, at first glance. Let me uh, go ahead and check the inductance here as well. And the little uh, peak LCR meter here. 918 ohms and you can see we're at uh, almost 284 to 285 millihenries. Okay, and I'll go ahead and place another uh, piece of uh, gaffer tape here overlapping that uh, first piece. Everything's still looking uh, good here on DC resistance so I think we'll uh, go with that. Now let me look at rewinding the secondary itself. Here you can see I'm just hand winding the secondary of the uh, transformer back in place. Okay, here's the uh, transformer back together with the uh, secondary back on. It's not a perfect winding job. I did check the uh, DC resistance and it shows about 0.5, 0.6 ohms. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap another layer of tape and then the fun times begin. Let me see if I can get this back on these laminated pieces here. Okay folks, I've got everything put back together and uh, we'll do a test here. I checked DC resistance on the uh, primary. Still read uh, just over my 900 ohms of DC resistance and then uh, less than a half an ohm or right at a half an ohm here on the uh, secondary. And uh, you can see I've got everything soldered back in. About my best job here on soldering. I'll clean this up uh, just a little bit. And my orientation is uh, a little different than the original uh, winding. That's just where I had to uh, come off the, uh, the uh, transformer itself with the repairs that I made. And I was able to uh, squeeze everything back in there. And of course the uh, wires going back to the fill coil, and this is a 6 volt fill coil, um, they're a little bit frayed, so I may clean those up with some heat shrink or just replace them. And of course I've got to reattach these, um, get these back around this conductor and tie it into the pin. But I thought what we would do is uh, test the uh, transformer and the uh, speaker itself uh, just hooking up my uh, audio signal generator like I did um, back a little bit ago before I attempted the repairs prior to uh, understanding that the uh, primary was open. So let me grab my uh, leads here. And again we don't have the uh, fill coil itself any current flowing through it at this time, but uh, I've got an old 9 volt battery here. I'll probably just hook up across it uh, just for the heck of it and see what we've got. Flip on the uh, audio generator, see if we hear anything at all. And uh, that's a great sign. You guys may be able to hear that. All right, let me uh, energize the uh, fill coil. All right, let's grab a battery here and uh, hook this up. We'll energize the uh, fill coil using a 9-volt battery and uh, see what we've got here. All right, let me uh, flip on the uh, audio generator again. 
You may be able to hear that very faintly. We're uh, generating a signal about 400 hertz. And again, you can see I'm hooked up to the uh, primary side of the uh, transformer that uh, just repaired. Sounds good. That's at 60 hertz, 100 hertz. That's a thousand hertz. We'll cut the amplitude down some. So folks, I appreciate you uh, watching the uh, repair on this little output transformer. Aesthetically, uh, probably not my uh, best job, but it seems to be uh, functional. I think we'll go with it, and uh, you can see, I think an effort, um, you know, is well worth the, uh, the final output that we got here. Appreciate you guys uh, following along, watching this uh, video on the repair of this uh, output transformer and this uh, little Zenith 4B-231.